hello and welcome to another video and in this edition we are going to be looking at a an old version from a few weeks ago the weekly macro themes report this is Callum Thomas head of research at top down charts and what we're going to be looking at today is topic number four of this edition so we'll just scroll down straight into that one here we go so we've got what we've got here is a rather cryptic looking title which is the cans plus sn equals scans so this is what i've termed uh the scans economies so this is just for a bit of clarity sweden norway canada australia um new zealand so basically these are five countries that have got some pretty interesting similarities to each other they have their own currencies uh, their economies are sensitive to exports. There is a natural tendency for global monetary policy trends to spill over into them. Um, for example, with the Troika of the Fed, ECB, BOJ effectively exporting their easy monetary policy to these countries you know, via low global bond yields. And um, the other interesting thing about these economies is they all have a bit of sensitivity to commodities so I mean you look at the because I previously did a piece on the cans economies C-A-N-Z can Canada Canada Australia and New Zealand and um, they those are all you know pretty um, uh, equivocal commodity um, oriented economies there Norway also very heavily commodity oriented Sweden um, relatively more diversified um, export base but also a very heavy commodity component so why I mention that is really this here chart on the right and so the chart on the left by the way is the star of the show and we'll get into that in a minute but the one on the right here um, is kind of its enabling factor if you like so really what we've got here um, if you can see this period post crisis there was there was this initial attempt to hike rates across the various economies there they all actually got a bunch of rate hikes off um, New Zealand was a bit of a unique situation there because it had the earthquake which um, undid its plans there otherwise it probably would have done similar things to the others and um, so <laughs> The, the thing that I'd note here, which I find most interesting, is that because these co economies are all commodity oriented and you've had this big commodity downturn, particularly 14, 15, but, you know, a general trend down in commodities throughout that period, price crisis period, if your economy is sensitive to commodities, then, of course, that's going to be acting as a drag on your economy. And of course, um, what do you do when you've got a drag on your economy? You cut interest rates. And so one consequence of the commodity bust was lower interest rates across these economies. Combine that with the fact that, you know, those large QE countries had also been, you know, basically exporting their monetary policies across the world. You had this very interesting scenario here, which brings us to the chart on the left. And just a Bit of background on this chart first of all so this is an actual combination of two house price valuation indicators and uh, we can't really see there but sort of that the neutral point is 100 which is just about that 95 there so you can see we're passing the the hand the cursor across the page there so if it's below that line essentially it's an undervalued market if it's above that line it's an overvalued market and those two ratios are price to rent and price to income ratios and those are from the OECD <clears throat> they're normalized across time so that it's uh, relative to history now probably the most interesting part of this is how you had this absolutely substantial run-up in the um, credit boom times the pre global financial crisis period and unlike a few other notable examples f such as America, Ireland, Spain, etc. we could go through them in more detail in another time they didn't really experience that much of a crash and you can see there that they had pretty much all of them went from 
very high interest rates to very low interest rates. Even though they did try to hike, they went they they saw a substantial easing going into the financial crisis. So that acted as a real cushion to the um, to the housing market because you know you, if you think about the housing market, one of the the key variables is the cost of borrowing, and that's for a variety of reasons. It impacts on um, you know just whether the borrowers can afford to make their payments. It also impacts on uh, buying power because you know if the interest rates are lower then you can afford to borrow more but you know beyond just going sideways and not having a big correction they've had this second wave of of expansion so you can see there that actually you know this 14 15 16 period this is when the commodity crunch of the commodity collapse really accelerated and you know, you could see there that they, those economies all had a wave of extra monetary policy easing. And surprise, surprise, you've had this new wave of even higher valuations across the, the scans economies. And, you know, overvaluation is not in itself something, you know, by itself to get scared about or to be concerned about or to have as a risk um it's it's more of a background feature but it certainly denotes the vulnerability of the market so when you think about a housing market if you've got a housing market that's very overvalued and you're at a point where monetary policy you know at least domestically if not globally is at probably at the bottom of the cycle and where you know globally bond yields are probably um, bias to rise at this point as global economy improves and as a whole global central banks are sort of starting to move towards the exits I mean you've already got the majors like uh, the US Federal Reserve which is already hiking rates and stepping away from quantitative easing for, right into quantitative tightening and the ECB and BOJ are probably going to follow in the footsteps and if you have a bottom in rates and bottom of bond yields the next step is an increase and obviously the pace and magnitude of that increase matters immensely but when you've got an overvalued property market that makes things tricky because if bond yields rise very sharply and via a material amount that puts your property market at risk and you know if you think about what drove the property market up Obviously, if interest rates are going down and your property market's going up, it's probably debt. And if you look at the numbers, and we've looked at this previously, certainly across the Cairns economies, they have seen a substantial expansion in household debt, household leverage ratios. So that sort of, um, you know, from a financial stability standpoint, that creates further issues. So, you know, having a a, an overvalued property market correct, you know, go into a downturn, I mean, that has, that is going to put a drag on the economy, put it, probably put it into recession. Um, if you've got substantial debt that's sitting beside that, then, you know, that creates a second issue aside from an economic downturn, which is financial stability issues, which, you know, really is things like the banking system coming under pressure. And, you know, we saw during the um, Eurozone debt crisis that, um, you know, what appeared to be just one small economy or, you know, isolated issues amongst a handful of countries ended up being becoming really a global issue. And um, that drove a substantial correction across a um, number of asset markets during that time. So, you know, is it possible that the scans economies, you know, that we get a correction in these property markets that turns into a domestically systemic issue that you know raises questions across these types of economies and creates um, some sort of global ripple effect um, absolutely and you know I think that, that probably as a broader issue if we did see some kind of rapid increase in interest rates bond yields um, you know more a more rapid turnaround in global monetary policy settings than expected then you know this would probably only just be one of a number of areas that would um, come under pressure but you know, it's certainly one that's on our radar and um, you know even if you set aside that potential global 
impact um you know from a domestic standpoint you know you look at new zealand for example um that's that would be certainly a concern for uh, investors in new zealand assets um, and certainly the same could be said about australia canada and and the other ones so you know as a domestic issue and a potential global issue um, these are certainly ones that would make the risk list and um, one last note before we close out um, so this here rather interesting plot shows a snapshot in time and this is taking it a one step further so we've got the property market valuation indicators here and we can see them again here in the light blue and so of course you've got New Zealand Canada Sweden Australia Norway you know those are the ones that are featuring up at this end which is the SCA in NZ economies you could argue that you could put Belgium and the UK into that mix as well there's there's a couple of other countries that aren't listed on here because they're not in the OECD data set that you could also certainly put into this basket of um, overvalued and vulnerable property markets but the other thing that I've added in here in the dark line is stocks so this is the share market valuations um, again it's a it's pretty much a similar uh, similar methodology to what the OECD indicators are and so it's so it's valuations across time and you know New Zealand one stands out in particular there because you know you've got an overvalued property market and an overvalued stock market which is a similar situation in Belgium a little bit less so but similar in um, some of these other European countries down here as well so yeah that's very um, it kind of puts that into an extra sort of set of context um, and then I guess you can see down the other end there the um, unsurprising suspects such as uh, Japan Greece Portugal arguably um, structurally undervalued um, quote unquote undervalued but anyway it's another interesting chart um, that was part of a um, broader piece of analysis on that but just wrapping up there coming back to the bottom line the scans economies have significantly overvalued property markets and will be at risk should the global theme of low rates and easy monetary policy come full circle at pace and I'll leave it at that and if you've got any questions uh, comments um, just uh, throw them into the comment section of the YouTube video below and uh, be sure to just subscribe to the channel I'll be putting more of these videos out and uh, a few other interesting series um, as the year goes on